Hi, I'm Allison Wedner. I'm going to teach you how to make a no fog mask today. And the reason I'm doing this is because in the past year, of course, we've had a real need for masks. I don't see it going away anytime soon. And this is a way for you to make um, as many as you want for, for friends and family and there's and use some cute fabrics too. So the first thing, uh, oh, let me tell you about myself a little bit. I have um, a BA in home economics and teaching credentials in home economics. I taught um, sewing and cooking seventh and eighth grade uh, many years ago to two seventh and eighth graders, which was a lot of fun actually. And then the bulk of my teaching career has been teaching special education. So I retired in June and have been doing a lot of sewing, including making a lot of masks. And along with my sister, Meredith McMind, um, probably this style, I've made um, over a hundred of them. And I um, do sell them, um, not anything really spectacular, but I do, I do sell them at the Hagen Museum, which I volunteer at, um, even though they're closed, they do have them. And um, so let's get started showing this to you. I wanna talk about supplies first, and I've got a couple of piles of fabric here, and I'm gonna show you some different fabric, and it, you don't, you need very few supplies, and I try and keep the cost down too, but, um, I like using, these are called fat quarters, and you can see it says it on there. And basically it is a, it's not a quarter of a yard of fabric, it's a half a yard by half of the width of the fabric. So it's about 18 by 21 inches, but it's a real good size for making masks. You can get two of these masks out of it with a, with a piece left. Um, but two different places to get them. This one happens to come from Joann's Fabrics on Trinity Parkway in Stockton. And they often go on sale. Normally they're like $2.99 a piece. Right, I went and got this one so I would have it shown so you could see the label. Um, this is, was $1.49 on sale. This one's from Walmart, um, again on the Trinity Parkway. Um, they do carry fabric. This isn't, if you don't want to put too much into it, this is a good way to go is to get a fat quarter, okay? Two different kinds of fabric too, the way that they're printed. We have what's called non-directional. You can see that the pattern is all over the place. You can use it in any direction that you want. Then you have something that's called directional fabric. And you'll see, well, I have the stripe on top, but it would depend on how you wanted to put the mask. I've made one already um, out of that stripe fabric as a practice. And you can see the stripe goes up and down. You can go across if you want, okay? So this is directional. It means you have to cut it in the direction. And I've got, I will include a pattern with along with the video. You've got a chin seam. You want the chin seam to be going in the direction of your pattern. And you can see, like this cat one, you couldn't do it the long way because it would be, the cats would be going in the wrong direction. So um, this happens to be a little different style that I, mask that I did with that fabric. But then you've got, like this, the peace signs, they go in one direction. So you have to do it in the correct direction. Same with this. This, you could switch it. The feathers, the stripes, and the dachshunds, which is a directional fabric. I'm gonna use a non-directional fabric for this video, but I will show how to, how you can lay it on directional too, um, if you use the, if you use the pattern, okay? So first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna talk about my setup a little bit here. I have a portable, been sewing since I was nine, so it's been a long time. Um, I have a portable, this little ironing board that has a cutting board on the back. And I have cutting mats because how I do it is I measure it and cut it with a rotary cutter. It's the fastest way for me to do it. Um, but 
you will get a pattern. And, whoops, let me turn it around. And if you wanna print this up um, and then just use it and then just trace around it and cut it with scissors, you can do that. that. That makes it easy too. But first thing I always do is I press the fabric. I'm gonna use this one. This is Butterflies, it's non-directional. As you can see, you can use it in any direction. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of spray of water to get some of the wrinkles out. And I'm not gonna even iron the whole thing because I don't need it. And you'll notice the size of my iron too. This happens to be a travel iron. And I've had a small one. I've been using a small one called Steam Fast for a couple of years. I just, the last one just died on me. So I started to use this and it works really well. But you can see how small it is too. It's really good for the, for using with the mass. So I'm gonna take off the ironing board and set it aside show you how to mark it and then we'll cut it. Now, you always have what's called a selvage. If you know anything about fabric, you may not. Um, and it usually tells who made the line. Sometimes it doesn't say anything. You'll notice this has a lot of fringe on it. Sometimes it will have holes in it. Other pieces that I've used have, has these little holes and the holes are for um, attaching it to the loom when it's woven but you wanna cut that off because that's not, you don't want that included in your pattern. So I'm gonna cut off a bit and you see how I've got a nice new blade in here, how, I, how nice that cuts. So that's a, that's a nice way to, to cut, but like I said, use scissors if you have scissors. They're my fabric cutting scissors. Okay. All right, so there I've got one straight edge and I need to get a straight edge on the rest of this too. So I'm just gonna line it up. I'm not gonna even mark it. Just use my ruler and cut it. And these are specialty rulers too, as you can see, they're um, made out of lucite and you're able to see through them, see the markings. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna measure it and we want a piece, here's our pattern again. We want a piece that's nine inches by 13 inches. So I'm gonna measure that. And I'm just gonna, here, let me lay my ruler on the 13 inch mark. And I'm just gonna draw a little notch, little notch, and then I'm gonna do the other direction, nine inches. And then I'll just connect them up. You don't have to, I don't really need to do that, but I just wanted to show you a way to do it, and then you just cut. And then I'll cut, cut in the other direction. I've got two marks there, and I'll just connect them up. Okay, and there we go. Get rid of that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some folding and some marking. So I'm gonna fold it edge to edge and give it a press with your fingers. 
then turn it. You've got the open ends here and the fold here, then fold up. So you have the open ends on the top and on the right side. Do the same thing, press it. Now I'm gonna mark. And the directions will have the what you mark. But this is how um, I do it. This is a, a water soluble pen. So when you wash it, because this fabric is not washed, once you've sewn it, you will wash it, okay? And that's always important to do because fabric has the dyes, um, it has different kinds of chemicals in it, you wanna get rid of that. So, so our first marking, top edge and side edge is two inches. I'm gonna flip it around a little bit. I'm gonna measure up an inch and a quarter and then over an inch and five eighths. And then you're gonna make two marks. This is gonna be for your chin area. This is the, the diagonal cutting here and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But these last two marks are, you're gonna mark where your elastic is gonna go. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna do a yard, uh, an inch and five eighths on both sides, okay? So then the next thing, I'm gonna cut the corners off. And this, I do like doing this. Something kind of satisfying about using the rotary cutter and cutting this off. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna line up the two marks and I'm gonna cut this corner off. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Line up the two marks and cut the corner off. Okay, all right. So now the next thing, always really important if you're using one of these is close it. So I've been very lucky, but I belong to a couple of Facebook groups and there's somebody's always talking about cutting themselves. So it's not fun. So I'm gonna fold it long ways and then I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in. I'm gonna give it a little, little squish. Okay, put a pin here and then flip it over put a pin in the same place, and then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these lines, okay? So, I'm gonna move over here. Okay. So, really important that you backstitch at the beginning and backstitch when you get finished because you don't want the um, seam to come out, okay? Very important when I was, when I was teaching um, seventh and eighth graders, how I always taught it was um, backstitch one, two, three, let go, and when you get to the end, same thing, one, two, three. And we're going to use a quarter inch seam. You can see right there. And I'm going to line it up. And you're going to line it up a little bit into the fabric because we want to backstitch it. So I'm going to backstitch it. One, two, three. I'm going to go forward. get to the end, do the same thing, okay? Lift the needle out, cut the thread. And just for a, um, knowledge too, this is a little different kind of a sewing machine. If you have a sewing machine at home, you'll notice this one's quite a bit bigger than a regular home sewing machine. This is actually a quilting machine. And it only does straight stitch, but does really nice straight stitch, and it's very fast. So, I treated myself a couple of years ago for Christmas and this was my, my 35 year old machine was very, very slow when I started quilting again. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, backstitch, go forward, backstitch again. Then we'll go over to the cutting mat again and we'll do the next step, which is ironing the seam, take the pins out, And this is an important part though too. You're gonna take scissors, it doesn't have to be, I just happen to have small sharp scissors. You can use regular scissors too, but you wanna make a little snip where the seam is. Can you see that? And we wanna cut to the seam line to open it up because we're gonna press this flat. And this will reduce the bulk and will allow the mask to lay flatter, okay? So we're gonna do the other side Okay. Be careful not to cut through your stitching, okay? That's a, 
I have done it and then I've had the mask turned all the way completed, turned around, and I've had to go back and restitch it. So it's better to do it correctly the first time. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm going to open up the corner and you're gonna do a little bit of a finger press once you get it open. Squish it down a little bit. And then I'm going to give it a press with some steam. Okay, so you're pressing it flat. We're going to do the other side. Sometimes my fingers are too big for some of this stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we've got, this is your chin seam right here. So let me show you how, we're not done with it yet, obviously, but there you can see how the pleat or the dart makes it fit under your chin, okay? So I'm gonna turn it back out because we want it inside out to finish it up. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna line up the two seams, put a pin in it. and then put a few more pins because I find that if I don't put at least um, two pins on each side plus the middle one, this part is now cut on the diagonal, which is called bias, and it stretches. So you don't want it to stretch out of shape because it can, it can round it. We want it straight. So I'm putting in a pin and then a pin in the middle, and that will hold it. And that'll allow me to sew it straight. Now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this seam. <clears throat> Same instructions, quarter inch, okay, back stitch. And you're going to use your fingers to keep it manipulated and keep it straight, okay? So I'm keeping it on the line there. And it wants to curve out a little bit. Just move it back with your fingers. Now we're to the elastic part. Okay, go back here. Take my pins out. I'm gonna cut off the stragglers. Some fabric is, has a frays a lot, um, and I'm I'm a pretty neat sewer, so I'm a I will go and I will cut everything off. So okay. So now we're gonna use the elastin. I didn't talk about elastic when I talked about supplies, but we'll do that now, okay? There are different ways you can get elastic. Um, pretty common is, just comes in a hank like this. Um, comes in white too, I just happen to have this. And it is quarter of an inch wide. Um, you don't want anything wider than quarter of an inch because it has to go behind your ear and it will start to rub it and make it hurt, okay? So what I did find at Walmart, I just bought this the other day, was this is an elastic like I've been using. Um, it's pretty soft, um, comes in uh, 15 yards, so 15 one yard hanks, and it was less than $7. Pretty, um, pretty economically priced if you're gonna make some. Now what I've been using is this and this because I've made so many of them. Um, Meredith and I were making them and you couldn't find elastic at the beginning of the pandemic. It was sold out every place. And when I was looking over the, I think it was probably June or July when I found this pattern, this no fog mask pattern. And I decided to look again on to see what other kind of elastic and they have this. This is very soft. It is mostly, it's all polyester. So what's real important about it's very stretchy as you can see. So it's, it's comfortable to wear on your ears, but it's, it's not any bigger than a quarter of an inch either. Sometimes you can find elastic that's less than a quarter of an inch, 
So if you're using this kind of elastic, which isn't quite as soft, but you can find it at places like Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Joann's, in the Hank, or it's in a, it comes in a package usually. Um, if you can get less than a quarter of an inch, this would work fine, okay? Since I've been making so many, this was 200 yards, this was 120 yards. So I've been making, doing a lot. So, so I'm gonna use the white that I have on my roll and you wanna cut two six and a half inch pieces for the earpiece. So I'm just gonna measure it out on my little mat here. And six and a half inches seems to fit just about everybody. So that's why I've been doing it this width. I started doing it a little bit, I had some that I did a little bit smaller, then I tried them on myself and they weren't that comfortable. So I went back to the six and a half inches, okay? So we've got our two pieces here. Now we're gonna, we're gonna insert the elastic into inside the mask. Our first one we're gonna do, the reason we do the seam here is because you're gonna put the elastic inside and you're gonna kind of push it up against that seam and put a pin in it. Okay, so I'm gonna just line it up and I'm gonna keep it, manipulate it so it stays straight. And I'm gonna squish it up against there. So you can see that. I've got the end sticking out so you know you've got it in the right place. Okay, put a pin in it. Now the next part's a little bit not as not as easy as that actually because you're having to reach inside you need to make sure the elastic is straight and we're going to mark we're going to put it on this mark here okay so i'm just going to reach inside and pull it out and then put it in place if you need to you can put a, a pin right here on the line and then just butt the elastic up to it then take the pin out and put it through the elastic, okay? And I'm gonna put one more pin in the middle. I tend to be an over pinner, so, um, but it also saves things from going, like you going off the line and stuff. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Put it inside. Okay, reach in and I'm gonna straighten the elastic. I can feel it's got a little fold in it. There we go. Do the same thing, line it up. So it's straight. There we go. <clears throat> and then we're going to take it and we're gonna sew it. And we're getting, this is getting down to the, the end, <laughs> so. All right, so we're back at the sewing machine. We're gonna do the same thing. I always start on the right-hand side, so it's the bottom of the mask. And you're going to backstitch it at the beginning, you're also then going to go over the elastic, which is right there where the pin is, and then you're gonna go back and forth. So you're gonna go, because what you don't want, we discovered when we were first doing these that if you didn't sew over several times over the elastic, it might pull out, and you don't want that to happen. So you want it to be sturdy. So, but I'm gonna do that on both of the elastics. Now this one I'm gonna sew all the way to the end. So I'm gonna start, I'm lining up on quarter inch again. Back stitch. Gonna go over the elastic, then go back. There we go. Okay, back stitch. So that means it's been sewn over three times that way. Okay, I'm gonna go to the end, I'm gonna back stitch. Cut my threads. Okay, now this one's a little bit different. We're gonna use, this is gonna be the opening to pull it inside out. So we're gonna actually start sewing down at the elastic. But do the same thing. I put, usually put it on the elastic, 
then back stitch off of it, come back, back stitch, and go forward. Okay, here's our other elastic, back stitch. There we go. back to my table here. All right, so the next thing you wanna do, um, like cutting the, cutting the seam here so it allows it to lay better, you wanna do the same thing with these corners, okay? So very carefully, because you do not wanna cut through this right here, this corner, or you're gonna have to restitch it. So I'm, but I'm gonna just take off a little bit of the bolt what that allows is when you turn it inside out, you'll actually get a crisp corner, okay? So I'm gonna trim that off. See, I'm not cutting through, but I'm taking a little bit of the fabric off. Okay, and do the same thing here. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna reach inside and you can do it. I have big hands, so my fingers can get in there, but I'm gonna reach in all the way across and I'm gonna grab the elastic on the other side and I'm gonna pull it out, okay? Don't pull too hard, you wanna just gently work it out. Okay, and there's our other elastic. Trim a few of these threads off. Well, another, there we go. It's easier if you trim them off because then they're not in your way. And if you pull too much, you're gonna unravel the fabric a little bit. So the next thing is we're going to um, work the corners out. That's the corner that you cut off. And here's our other one, okay? If you have a seam ripper, you can very carefully use a seam ripper um, or you can use a pin like I'm doing right here and you can pull it, gently pull out the corner, okay? And we got one more corner to do. This is where we sew it all the way through to the end. Usually this one comes out pretty fast, but the same thing if you need to pull, see it's, it's tucked in a little bit, so I'll pull it out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is what it's going to look like. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press it and then do the top stitching and then we will be done. So the first thing I do is, because I've been sewing a long time and I'm gonna kind of grunch you out, but I lick my fingers and I squish the seam out. This is the bottom seam and I press it flat. Helping, um, licking your fingers, just it's like using that, um, stuff for envelopes or turning pages. It's that kind of, it's kind of like that. It allows you to not, the fabric not to slip through your fingers. But then I squish it. You see I'm kind of finger pressing it along here and we'll give it a press on this first seam. That's the one that's the most like difficult to get down. So I'm gonna give it a press. Be very careful you don't press the elastic. This elastic will melt. Um, so that's why it's nice to have this little iron, but you would use the tip of your iron um, if you have a bigger iron, okay? See, it's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna work my way around. Go to the top. And our last side. Okay, the last thing is we have an opening here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck it in. Sometimes it works pretty fast. Sometimes it's a little bit of manipulation. You just want it, this one's gonna be a little manipulation one. Okay, I'm gonna tuck it in with my finger. And I'm gonna make sure that it's straight. And you can tuck it in a little bit more, see? And we're gonna take care of that by top stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a press. The next 
thing is we're going to make the top line where the, this will be the nose pleat, which is <clears throat> this part right here. Okay, this is a finished one and what it looks like on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it over to the top of the elastic and you're just gonna press it flat. Okay, next thing, a couple of pins to hold it down. You see how it's lined up? It's about an inch and a quarter down. So I'm gonna put a pin in each side. And I always do it on the top side, not this side, because I'm gonna top stitch on this side. So you always wanna, um, I'm working from the top of it, okay? So now we're gonna do the top stitching on it. And You'll notice that I've got a little piece of tape here. You can use painter's tape. This happens to be a kind of tape that sewers use, and it's marked at an eighth, about an eighth of an inch, okay? So here's our quarter of an inch, so it's about, this is at about eighth of an inch. I, because I have a, a pretty good eye at this point, I can do it just by lining up in the middle of my presser foot, but um, this is a good way to mark it. Um, if you're not sure about it. So I'm gonna start at the bottom edge, okay? Back stitch again. And I'm gonna carefully go along. Now, what's nice about sewing is that you can, if you don't like what it looks like, you can take the stitches out. It's not a done deal. So um, if you don't like, Say you got off the line a little bit and you started to go too far in, just take the stitches out, okay? And just start over again. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the corner here. I'm gonna go through the fold. And you'll notice that I'm leaving the needle down when I turn it, because that's your pivot point. Put the presser foot back down. Last one, and I always cut the tails off before I do the last part because then you don't have to worry about it getting stuck in the stitching. Okay, I'm gonna go to the end. Back stitch. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the ironing board and I'll show you the end of it. Okay, so now it looks like this, and we want it to look like this. So how you're gonna press it, basically you're gonna fold it in half, and you're just gonna reach in, you're gonna pull the nose piece out, like this. And you're gonna kinda line it up, because we wanna make this diagonal, diagonal pleat there, because that is what makes the um, mask be no fog is because it sits on, especially if you have glasses, sits under your glasses that way, okay? All right, so then I'm just gonna press it flat with some steam. You don't have to do this until you wash them. That's how I would do it. And washing, um, I wash them in a mesh bag for lingerie. You can hand wash them and then lay them flat, just, just Fold it in half like this, just lay them flat and let them dry, and then you iron it, iron them afterwards. But that's what it looks like. And then, let me show you with it on. And you can see, it goes under your chin, goes on top of your nose, and has a pretty tight fit on the edges. And then glasses, because this is why I started doing this one, because I was, the fog was driving me crazy. And then you can, thank you. Since the uh, CDC is recommending uh, a double mask, you can actually double mask with these. So here's just a regular medical mask. I think I got this at, I go to Sutter. They always give me a new mask. So I'm gonna take my glasses off. But then you can fit it, you can fit it on top. 
okay? And then you can do, this is a, an N95 mask, which has a little bit more of a peak, but you can, you can fit it on top too. So they're roomy enough that you could do it, do it this way too. So, um, let's see. What else? Oh, yes. Thank you. My, I have made a lot of masks. Let me take these off so you can hear me. Okay. I've been making a lot of masks. So let me just show you some of the ones that I've done. And I just, I get kind of on a roll. And they're fun to make, they're easy to make, but so you can see the variety of, of materials that you can use. Some I've purchased, a few of these were leftover scraps. This was a tablecloth that I made for my sister-in-law. This is recycled fabric, something that I had that I, I made a skirt of it, out of it for myself. I always liked the fabric, didn't like the skirt, but kept the material. So I made masks out of it. And one of Meredith's friends purchased one of those. So this was another vintage fabric too. And then I mean, I've just got a lot of different ones and you can see, got lots of them. So anyway, and like I said, the Hagen Museum, the manager there, she purchases them from me and I include instructions with them we can take a picture of that of the instructions too um on how to take care of it okay so they're all 100 percent cotton except for the elastic um you can see that if i've got a different color i'm used white here because i was had a white background but you can use different colored um thread on it. This one happens to have like a turquoisey thread because I, I want to go with what the fabric looks like, um, the coloration of the fabric. So, um, like I said, out of a, out of a fat eighth, this is a fat eighth again, or not a fat eighth, I'm sorry, a fat quarter. Um, you can get at least two masks out of it because this is 18 inches wide, you need nine inches, nine by 13. So that's about here. You can see, and then you'll have a piece at the end. I don't think it's enough. Well, it might be enough to make a third mask, possibly. So you can get at least two out of a fat quarter and the fat quarters are, like I said, an inexpensive way to do it. Um, I did wanna show on a fat quarter, we talked about directional fabric where the pattern goes, and let me just show you how you would lay it out. Let me get these off of here. So, we've got, let's use this one. This is directional. Now you could do this up and down if you want, or you could do it sideways, okay? So, but if you wanna do it, depending on how you wanna do it, Say I wanted it to go across, then I would have to lay the pattern this way. And I can still get two of them out of it with some scrap, okay? Because we want where the chin seam is, that's gonna be your pattern. Now, if you want it to be the other direction, you can do that. And again, you can still get two out of it, okay? Possibly another smaller one, okay? So let me show another directional one. That's not a fat order. This was yardage that I bought. And this is the dachshund one. Um, so, but you have to put it, you have to put it long ways. Okay. Because we want that pattern to show. Okay. So you would always have to do it this way. Okay. Cause then you would have the dachshunds going in the correct, the correct direction. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. Okay. Hope you enjoy making them. I've had a good time making them, and uh, the I'm gonna have directions on how to do it pretty pretty step by step. But it's, if you are watching the video, 
you should be able to easily follow along with the written directions too, and the pattern will be included.